Okay, so we have passed the halfway point and we are really uh, working towards the home stretch. So last video was about external environment. So I want to tie a couple things together uh, with uh, internal environment that we're going to discuss this week and which makes up the core of really understanding uh, the development of the strategic planning process. So think about the external environment as the macro environment in which we really talked about the things that we position the organization in the, in, in the external environment within the industry segments. Okay, So let's tie that to SWOT analysis. So if you think about SWOT analysis, strengths, opportunities, weakness, and threats, the external environments are where opportunities and threats occur outside the control of the organization. So that's why the in external environmental analysis and, and identifying um, opportunities and threats uh, to the organization uh, is important. And that's why the Porter's Five Forces analysis helps you as a tool in order to figure out that external positioning. So now we flip over to internal, the things we control. So when you look at SWOT analysis, those would be your strengths and your weaknesses because all of those things are internal to the organization that allows you to control them. And that, is, that would be things that are relevant to your core competencies, all the assets of the organization, tangible and intangible assets, okay? Uh, all the resources and the ability to now gather information in the form of data and then turn data into information that you can now discern those things into strategic objectives for the organization so that are then tied to figuring out how we achieve the mission of the organization. So internal analysis relevant to a SWOT analysis is where you will find all your strengths and your weaknesses because those are things that are internal to the organization that you want to be able to control. So the key tool here, again, is another Porter's uh, uh, tool called the value chain. So if you look in the presentation, the value chain is a little different than what's in Wall Street's uh, 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 textbook. But that's okay. Uh, I really wanted to do that because I think this version that I presented in the presentation is a little uh, easier to understand. In which, if you look at the value chain, the bottom half is where your human resources, your technologies, all those things are, all of your tangible and intangible assets. You use all of those things for the top half of the value chain where it's uh, pre-service, service, and post-service, where you develop and deliver all of your products and services to your customer base. So defining the value chain in that sense, um, how that is broken out. So value chain, important tools. Again, then there are other tools, stakeholder analysis, uh, benchmarking, all these tools are used to apply to the data gathering component so you can figure out what the value is in the organization to be able to tie those things to the strategic objectives and align them with your external uh, environmental uh, analysis. So then finally, we wanna talk about chapter 10, um, uh, strategy and planning, okay? And in this, we really wanna talk about how we take all of those analyses uh, components and really turn them into goals. One key tool to do that is using the SMART goals of a, a methodology. Specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time boxed uh, as a means to using, when you divide, design a goal, apply SMART methodology to determine whether the goal is relevant or not, okay? So again, SMART goals, it's, uh, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time boxed. So using those components of, uh, as a methodology. Then the next big piece in, in, in chapter 10 is really the graphic we have on page four. The environmental analysis where we bring the internal, external analysis and do gap analysis. What is the difference between current state and our future state, the gap? And once you identify the gap between where you are today and where you want to go in the future, that's where we apply some of this analysis to develop strategic options, create strategic options, create uh, specific action plans that then are all are the things that you actually implement in the process to achieve the, uh, uh, 
the, the to achieve the the mission and vision of the organization. So that those components make up what goes into a strategic plan document, which we will talk about in the next couple of chapters. What does a document look like? Okay, so enough of that. <laughs> I wanted to uh, just get that out to you. So let's have a great discussion this week about that. And really, I don't want to hear about Walson says in our discussion forum. Everybody has read the chapter. We know what Walson says. I want you to tell me what does all of this mean to you from all the things that we've discussed and all the components that we've learned? Tell me if this makes any sense to you. It may or may not be. There are no right or wrong answers. If you make a great argument to, and tell me why an organization shouldn't be doing strategic planning and spending all these resources to do that, I'm good with that. Argue your point and tell me that the organization could be use its resources to do something uh, better or, 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 in your opinion, do it a different way. So, okay. Um, let's have a great discussion week and we will talk to you soon.